Hello, sports fans and baseball fans, and particularly for this video, Stratomatic Baseball and Status Pro Baseball fans. Today's video will be a comparison of Stratomatic Baseball with Status Pro Baseball, which I have both of. Uh, Stratomatic, if you know me and you know my collection or are familiar with my collection in any way, I have nearly every season of Stratomatic baseball that Stratomatic has ever made, either one of their reissued sets or an original set that they originally put out. So I have quite a few seasons. Of um, Status Pro, I have um, here in this box is the 1978 season, and I also made several other seasons, and I do plan in the very near future on doing some Status Pro games for the channel. I have been reacquainting myself with the game through the directions and through watching others do Status Pro baseball games on their own channels. And so, in this, in this particular video, my intention, again, Stratomatic and Status Pro, my intention is to compare the two games. Now, when I do my comparison, I am not going to get down into the weeds about all of the rules and all of the iterations and everything that can happen in the games. The point of this video is just to give an overview of the games, how the game engines work and how they produce their results in a general kind of overarching way to give you a comparison of the differences between each game. And I will preface my comparison by saying that I like both games very much. I like Stratomatic Baseball a lot. I am a big Stratomatic guy, you know that. I have hundreds of videos on my channel with Stratomatic Baseball and Stratomatic Football and uh, I've even had Stratomatic Hockey on. So I am a huge Stratomatic fan, you know that. And I, I do like Status Pro. Um, I've only kind of just gotten reacquainted with it somewhat recently. And then kind of off and on, I learned the directions. I tried to do a walkthrough of a game and I, you know, didn't get very far. So now I'm trying to like do walkthroughs in the background before doing a video so that I get good enough at it that I can do it kind of relatively quickly. So I am getting really familiar with the game and we will do a comparison of the two and, you know, we'll see how that all uh, shakes out. Again, not getting down into the weeds. If you want to know the directions, if you want to know how to play it, I've got videos about my, you know, house rules for Stratomatic Baseball um, and you can look at that. Um, but we're not going to get down into the weeds on either game. We're just going to do kind of a quick overview. And with that in mind, let's get on with that. All right, so here you can see I've got my Status Pro baseball setup. And we are looking at um, the board as it comes. It comes in two parts. You can see here's one part, and each part folds up. Um, and you have various uh, chart results uh, all around the outside of the actual playing field. Within the playing field, you'll notice there is a home pitcher reduction and a uh, visitor pitcher reduction. You also have spots for both pitchers and you have spots for both lineups. And then, of course, here you have your fast action deck. Let me just get that in there so you can see that. 
So this is what drives the game in Status Pro Baseball. Uh, fast action cards. And you draw a fast action card to get various results as opposed to Stratomatic Baseball, which is based on dice. And the only uh, fast action type cards in uh, the Stratomatic Baseball are the split cards in the split deck, and you don't even have to use those. You can use a 20-sided die instead and make it a totally die-based or dice-based game. This game, Status Pro, has none of that. So let's take a look at some of the cards. Here's a batter's card for the 1978 Detroit Tigers, and this is Ron LaFleur. Let me, let me get him in there. There you go. So there's Ron LaFleur's card. Of course, this wouldn't mean anything to you until you read the directions and find out, you know, what all of this stuff means. And uh, we've got the, you got the base tokens right here for your base runners. You have whether the infield is in or back, and you can mark that with a, uh, you know, with a token. And then you have the outs. You can track the outs here, just like you can with, um, I mean, the Stratomatic board has that same thing. Now, one of the unique features that I like about this is the pitcher reduction uh, chart right here. You start your token wherever the pitcher rating is. And on Roger Erickson, this is Roger Erickson, pitcher for the 19... 78 um, Minnesota Twins, there's his card. And you can see that, or you could have seen if I had pointed it out at the various time, that his starter rating is 16. I don't know if that's what it stands for, but I'm just, it's an SR rating and it's 16. And so you can see here on the home pitcher chart, we start his token at 16. Now, anytime Roger Erickson in this game gives up, allows a base runner or a run, you move the pitcher reduction rating uh, token, that number of spaces until it gets down to one or zero and he is no longer effective. So uh, it starts at 16. So let's say he starts off the game by allowing three walks. So that would be one, two, three, and now he's down to 13. And then if he gives up a grand slam home run, that's a, that's a one for the hit. And then it's four for the, uh, all the four runs that he allows. So one, two, three, four. If he walked the bases loaded and then allowed a grand slam, he would go from eight to 16. He would already be half used up, you know, in the first inning. Although, really, let's be honest, that rarely ever happens, even with the worst of pitchers. You have charts over here. This is a squeeze play chart. This is a bunting for a base hit chart, um, clutch defense chart, sacrifice chart, stolen base charts. And you also have other charts that tell you what happens. Um, such as this chart that tell you what happens when there is uh, outs, you know, various number of outs with um, a various number of runners on base, for instance, um, or, or um, for instance, there's no runners on base. You look at a certain chart, if there's two runners on base at sec first and second, you look at a certain chart. If there's two runners on base at second and third, you look at a different chart. Uh, to tell you what happens, because on the batter's card, you will generally only see that he was out. For instance, if we look at Ron LaFleur's card, you can see, you can see on his card, down there near the bottom, it says uh, out, and it says 55 to 88. So when you pick a fast action card, and you can see that this fast action card has a random number on the top of 77. 
Um, and so if we were looking at Ron LaFleur's card and, uh, and we, if it had been determined that we were looking at Ron LaFleur's card, he would be out, but we wouldn't know exactly how he was out until we referred to the out chart. So this, like Stratomatic, it is a 50-50 based game. Uh, it takes into account the pitcher and the batter. Although uh, Stratomatic is almost exactly 50-50 or is exactly 50-50, half the time you're rolling on the batter's card, half the time you're rolling on the um, pitcher's card. It just depends, but the columns are divided up so that the column die is half of the column die determines whether it's the pitcher or the batter, and then the other half determines whether it's the pitcher or the batter. In this game, it uh, depends on how effective the pitcher is, whether you're referring to his card or to the batter card. For instance, you see on Roger Erickson, if we look at Roger Erickson again, uh, you can see he is a he is a PB. Um, what does that say? Two to six. PB two to six. So that determines on the fast action card. So let's flip this over. We and if we were flipping this at the start of the game, you can see that the PB number is um, an eight. So this would mean that it would be on the batter's card. We would be taking the result off the batter's card because it doesn't fall between two and six. So uh, in that case, we would do that. But you hear here, you have a PB four. So this would be off Roger Erickson's card. And that's basically how Status Pro Baseball works. You go through, you flip the fast action cards. You can flip as many as three or four cards for one result. To get, for instance, one out, you would pick it first to see whether it was the pitcher batter card, then you would pick another one. If there was an out, you would pick another one to see what kind of an out. Then you would pick another one potentially to see if there was an error on the fielder that the ball was hit to. So you could pick, you know, four, as many as probably four cards, I would say, um, per batter or per, um, per result. But on the pitcher's card, obviously, and on, the, and on the batter's card, you have strikeouts. So those would be quicker results. You wouldn't have to go any further than just seeing that the guy struck out. And like I say, that's basically how Status Pro works. Again, I like this uh, pitcher fatigue system, although they do say that it's optional. Um, but I would highly recommend using it if you're going to play the game. Um, and so that's how that works. But let's take a look at Stratomatic Baseball. All right, so let's talk about Stratomatic Baseball. As you can see, this is the Stratomatic Baseball setup. Similar to the Status Pro, although you do not have all of your charts and everything around the outside of the ball field, the charts are separate. And uh, depending on whether you play Advanced, Super Advanced, or Basic, there are between two and four charts to refer to um, on various given plays. Uh, Status Pro has quite a few more charts because there are a, there's a chart in Status Pro for every single out situation or, um, you know, situation with, yeah, with the outs, with the number of runners that are on base. Um, but those, those different situations are covered in like one chart for the basic and the advanced. Now, the um, as far I'm not a hundred percent sure. I don't know if there is a basic and advanced version of Status Pro, but there is a basic, advanced, and super advanced version of um, uh, Stratomatic. Right here, you've got the uh, the front of the cards are the basic version or the basic, 
you know, the basic card. And then if you flip the cards over, that's where you have the advanced and uh, super advanced uh, readings and ways of coming up with, uh, you know, determinations on the play. The, um, the advanced, everything above basic, everything that's more advanced than basic uh, uses a, uh, you know, batter, left-handed uh, batter versus left-handed pitcher result, um, you know, like uh, the, using the different handed, you know, or, um, whether a batter is right-handed or left-handed, whether the pitcher is right-handed or left-handed. Status Pro takes that into account in uh, certain cer situations, but not in every single uh, situation. Um, I mean, it does have, like, it'll say that a guy's a left-handed power hitter or a left-handed normal um, hitter. But the actual result of a lefty facing a lefty or a lefty facing a righty um, are not specifically determined except in certain situations in Status Pro, as far as I know. That may be incorrect, but that's, that's my take on that. But in this Stratomatic, you can, if you play advanced, it, every matchup is like that. So I'm a right-handed batter when I used to play. Um, if I faced a left-handed pitcher, you would refer to my, um, you know, you would refer to my card on the versus left-handed pitcher side of the card. So this is the basic setup right here. Like I said, here's a 20-sided die. Now here are the split cards. You can use one or the other. I always use a 20-sided die when I have a split situation come up. And uh, by split situation, I mean like here on Lewis Robert, you have um, a double one to six or a single seven to 20. So in that situation, you would either pick a split card which if we, well, that's a blank split card. All right, so if we do that here, you've got a number two. So in this case, if you use the split deck and you pick the split card, he would get a double. If we roll the 20-sided die, I get a nine. So in that case, he would actually have a single. Um, it's just up to the preference, but um, most people, I think, when they play the card and dice version, they use a... Uh, a 20-sided die for the splits. As you can see, it also has the out markers right on the field, uh, just like the Status Pro does. And you usually what you have is this box right here is for the pitcher who is currently pitching. So I've got Dylan Cease in there. This is the White Sox and the Blue Jays. It doesn't really matter. But um, here you would assume that we were... Um, playing in Chicago and so Dylan Cease would be on the mound and then he is his card is in the pitcher in the pitcher slot and then when uh, the White Sox would bat you would take him out and then you would put Robbie Ray here's Robbie Ray you would put maybe Robbie Ray in the pitcher box and have him uh, be the pitcher and then you would refer to the pitcher in the pitcher box now you can do that you can do that, or you can have, you know, like if I was playing against somebody, I could have, um, you know, whoever would have Toronto would have the lineup maybe here, and then their pitcher right here, and then I would have Dylan Cease over here, and my lineup over here. And then I would go through the lineup and say what happened, and, you know, what I roll, and after the roll, what happened. So, like, if I roll this dice... This is a 6-3. So now, uh, as I talked about in Status Pro, there is a column die, and then there's going down the column. Six, three, um, 1 through 3, you would refer to the batter's card, and 4 through 6, you would refer to the pitcher's card. So in this case, I rolled a 6-3. If I'm playing Toronto, we refer to Robbie Ray's card. We go to six and we go down to three, and that is a left field, a fly ball left field X, and then that would mean I would refer to the left fielder uh, chart, fielding chart, and then um, we would uh, roll another 20 sider or pick um, the uh, 
pick the uh, a split deck card and see what would have happened on that fly ball to left field. Um, so uh, that's the basics. That's the basic setup. Again, I'm not going too in depth. I'm not going to get down into the weeds, but that's basically how this game works. You roll the dice. Here you've got a three four. So if I had Lewis Robert up at the plate, I would go. I would look at his three column. I'd go down to four, and it's a fly ball to center field B, which means that the runner on third had, would uh, go home, and other runners would stay where they were. And again, that would be on a chart that you would refer to. And again, uh, Stratomatic has fewer charts to refer to than Status Pro does, especially when you consider that Status Pro has various chart reading type things all around the outside of the board, in addition to other charts that you would look at. Um, and, St and Stratomatic does not have that. So that is a basic overview of how Status Pro uh, is played versus Stratomatic. Again, I like both games a lot. Probably like Stratomatic better, but then again, I'm also biased because I've played Stratomatic a lot more. I have a lot more Stratomatic seasons. I have done Stratomatic more on my channel, um, I, and it was the very first, this was, the, Stratomatic was the very first game I played. Status Pro, I picked up a little later after that, uh, both, both while I was a teenager, but Status Pro was the second game. And so I think there's a tendency for people to say that whatever the second game was that they picked up, they don't quite like as much as the first game. That's in a lot of cases, and it's definitely the way it is with me. Who knows, if I had seen Status Pro first, I might have liked Status Pro better, but um, as luck would have it, I do like Stratomatic a little better. Now, Stratomatic, I would say, is more intuitive, out of the box. You look at it, you look at the cards, you look, you know, you maybe, you know, kind of peruse the directions and immediately you know how to play the game and you know what to do. Um, with Status Pro, it's a little bit more involved than that. Not a lot more, but there is a little bit more to learn. There's a little bit more nuance to it. It's not something where you could just break it out of the box, look at all the cards, look at what you're given and decide that, hey, I know how to play this game. Stratomatic is almost like that, though. I mean, that's how simple it is. And that's how the um, owner of Stratomatic, Hal Richmond, wanted to design it. That was by, uh, you know, on purpose. He wanted it to be simple, easy, play it quickly, but also um, mirror real-life performances of Major League players, which I think he does accomplish. And I want to say that um, even if you play, if you play um, basic versus um, versus advanced or super advanced, I still think you get um, realistic results even from basic over the long haul. Probably in any given series or game, you wouldn't get as realistic a result as you would get from the advanced game. But over an entire season, everything tends to come out of the wash, and the basic game is nearly as realistic as the advanced game. So, that is what I would say about Stratomatic Baseball. So, that is my discussion and comparison of Stratomatic to Status Pro. The general ways that the games are played... Um, and you could kind of see what the differences are by the way that I did it. Uh, another um, aspect of the two games, though, um, Status Pro, you get, I believe Status Pro made or has available every single player that played for the team that season. And in the directions... For Status Pro, they actually tell you how to make batter and pitcher cards for anybody 
given any set of statistics. So you can look at the, if you want to make your own card, if you want to make cards of players you that maybe Status Pro doesn't have, you can do that. Um, it gives you the actual formula and the way to make the card, which is kind of cool. That is awesome. Just believe me, Stratomatic does not do that. Another aspect of the two games is that with the cards that you get, um, uh, you're going to have players like fringe players that don't have a lot of at-bats, don't have a lot of innings pitched. Stratomatic tends to make those cards, they kind of try to project how the player would do if they had played more. For instance, um, if you have a guy that hits, um, let's say 600 versus righties, he's a left-handed batter, he hits 600 versus righties. And he only hits 153 or 180 or something uh, versus lefties. Stratomatic's uh, version of the versus uh, right-handed pitcher side of the card is not going to be a 600 hitting card. It'll be good. It'll be very good. But it's not going to reflect a 600 batting average. Stratomatic does not do that. Um, I mean, that's just how it is. They don't do that. And, um, and even if you look at the basic card of somebody maybe with 10 at-bats and they got four hits and they hit 400, if you were to see that person's card on the basic side for Stratomatic, it would not reflect a 400 batting average. They would do some kind of watered-down formula way that they do to make a very good card, but not a 400 hitting card. Status Pro, however, if you have a guy that got up 10 times and he hit 400 and two of those hits, two of those four hits that he got were home runs, that is going to be one heck of a card. And it's going to reflect that exact type of statistical performance. So it's really incumbent with, with Status Pro, it's really incumbent not to, um, you know, not to take advantage of that system. When we were kids, I forget what year it was, but Mickey Klutz of the Oakland A's, my God, that guy had a Babe Ruth type card because he didn't have a lot of at-bats and he had a lot of home runs for the at-bats that he had. Crazy. Now, if you had seen a Mickey Klutz card made by Stratomatic for that particular year, I wish I knew what year it was. If you do, if you know what year it was, leave a remark in the comments. But if you had seen that card for Stratomatic, you would be like, well, this is, this is really good, but this is not nearly as good as he did. So that is another difference between Status Pro and um, Stratomatic. Um, like I said, it's cool that they give you the formula and they tell you how to make a batter's card and how to make a pitcher's card. It's, it's, that's awesome. I may, uh, you may actually see me in a game in status pro and it'll be a card based on exactly what my card would look like given my statistics, which are, let's just say would be less than accurate. But anyway, that is my comparison. What did you guys think? If you've played both games, especially if you played both games extensively, which one is your favorite? Leave a comment below, give me a thumbs up, and that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.